So, you finally reached the max level in Dragon Fable. Now what? How's it going guys? I'm your host Corban Gaming and today I'll be sharing with you guys 8 things that you can consider trying out in Dragon Fable at Endgame. Now, most of the things listed here can be done at any level, but you may find it easier to do them once you reach max level. Keep in mind that these are merely suggestions and this video is updated as of 30th August 2022. Stuff may change in the future. Without further ado, let us begin. First things first, you will want to upgrade all of your gear to max level whether it's through buying them from shops or grinding them through quests. Not every single piece of equipment in the game has a max level version so I would strongly advise checking through the forums before you waste your time farming for something that doesn't exist. Most of the best in slot resistance gear can be found scattered throughout story quests, so I would recommend farming for those first as they can come in handy in practical situations. You can also start to slowly upgrade your defender metal gear to max level through the Tinder's disarray quest, but I would highly recommend to wait for a war as it is considerably faster to farm defender's medals through there. If you are looking for the cream of the crop equipment aka end game gear, then most of them can be found in the in at the edge of time challenges. It does take a fair amount of time to learn the mechanics of every challenge and some of them can really be hair pullingly frustrating. But that being said, they do reward you with the best gear in the game after all. If you're having trouble with any of them, then I recommend checking out my in challenge playlists for a quick rundown of the boss's mechanics and what classes I used to beat them. There's one for DA players and one for non-DA players, though keep in mind some challenges can't be beaten as a NDA. Before you start on the in challenges, I will also recommend first farming for the items mentioned in my top 10 strong but easy to get items video as they are frequently used to beat the in fights before you get your end game gear. There are some end game items that cost a ton of gold and that brings me to my next point, gold farming. While it is entirely possible to farm for gold before you reach max level, it is much more efficient to do so at max level because not only will you have increased damage output, allowing you to kill enemies faster, but each kill also rewards you with more gold. Be sure to check out my gold farming guide on the best places for gold farming as well as some tips on how to maximize efficiency. Common gold sinks at endgame include the Doom and Destiny weapons, the Dragonlord artifacts and the Soul Forged accessories. With the ability to max your potion training through the use of gold nowadays, gold farming and paying for the training straight up is a much faster way as opposed to leveling up the potions the conventional way, so that's also something you can spend your gold on. Low drop rate items Some notable examples include the vanilla ice katana, chicken cow armor, bonehead pet, and the list goes on. They may not be best in slot for anything, but it's bragging rights, and what better way to earn it than mindlessly grinding away at quests for an RNG drop. Ares PvP Grandmaster Ranking this is probably as tedious as, if not more tedious than farming defenders medals, and while back in the day it used to reward you with the best void element weapon in the game, much better weapons have been released with the introduction of the inn and all you really get now is a badge and a fancy title for your efforts. But hey, it's something right? Fishing Another tedious grind that really doesn't reward you with anything other than a badge. The worst part is that there's RNG involved, so you may find yourself struggling to add that elusive fish to your aquarium. Luckily for you, you will most likely find all the fishers before you max out your fishing rank. Classes While not every class is useful, most of them are at least good in one aspect. It's nice to be able to switch between different classes for the in challenges without having to worry about leveling them up. This being said, I do feel most players will have at least tried to rank them up before they reach level 90, but it's something to think about for those that haven't. The seasonal storybook quests and their respective classes Unless you have the storybook DC house item, you're gonna have to wait till they come around every year but generally they are pretty easy to do. The newer quests don't even come with badges anymore so you're mostly doing it for completion is a sake more than anything else. That being said, there are some really good items from the seasonal events, even more so for non-DA players so don't sleep on them. The seasonal classes on the other hand generally aren't fantastic but non-DA players will find some of them useful for the inn. And last but not least, any other badges you may have missed out in your book of lore. Some of them can come from side quests, so have fun and explore some of the side stories that the game has to offer. This game has some of the best storytelling out of all of AE's games after all. Do you agree or disagree with what I've said? Or maybe you feel there's something really important that I left out? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, be sure to join my Discord channel if you guys need help with anything. Plenty of helpful guides and resources, as well as experienced players there. With that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you have, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, it's free and will greatly help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and have your notifications turned on if you want to see more of such future content. Till the next time, I'm your host Corban Gaming, peace out.